Welcome back. It's been a busy Thursday on Parliament Hill. Our trio of MPs are always hankering to get to the hot issues, and here they are. Green Party Leader Elizabeth May, NDP MP Robert Chisholm, and Parliamentary Secretary for the Conservatives, Aaron O'Toole. Welcome to you all. Fracting. Fracking. Fracking. That's uh, an interesting uh, concept. They had a fracking, fracking device out in Parliament Hill today. Um, what did you think of the report? It sort of well, seemed of, sort of... Well, I was very... I, I'm, going to give a, a, a thank you to Peter Kent for commissioning this report. Fracking has been racing ahead in province after province without adequate study, and so a very eminent group of scientists were asked by former environment minister Peter Kent to look at it, and they said, wait, go slow. We don't have nearly enough information. Now, they were mostly looking at this, and for those who don't know, right, these are substrates of, of methane, natural gas. You have to break them up underground to try to get the natural gas out. Below the water. Below, table. and you end up using chemicals that uh, Environment Canada doesn't know all the chemicals that are used. There's issues of water contamination of groundwater. There's also, which this particular report didn't look at, that on a life cycle basis, fracked natural gas is about as bad as coal in terms of greenhouse gases, because you get a lot of escape of what are called fugitive gases. So you're getting a lot of greenhouse gases escaping to the atmosphere. It's a dirty process. Uh, what this report did was say we don't know anything about about some of the key questions. We don't know nearly enough about the key questions, so we need a lot more research before we give this stuff the green light. Yeah, Robert, your province, Nova Scotia, has got potential, but it's not going ahead with it yet. Did you take any comfort from the report that maybe that's a future industry in Nova Scotia or not? No, I, I, mean, I mean, I think the, what the uh, report did was uh, underline the concerns that many of us have had about the lack of information that's available out there. Um, the process, you know, as Elizabeth described, is sufficiently uh, uh, violent and involves some, you know, toxic chemicals that, you know, the companies won't even tell you what they are, and Environment Canada doesn't know what they are. Uh, that there's got to be some, there's got to be some consequences, uh, and uh, what they've said is there clearly will be uh, consequences. And the government has, has argued today that that there hasn't been any problem so why worry about it well guess what what they're saying is be very very careful and I, uh, mm -hmm. I commend the previous government the uh, NDP government of Nova Scotia and I know the Liberal government will uh, continue to make sure that fracking doesn't go forward uh, certainly before there's a lot more information and yeah, just because there hasn't been any accidents yet doesn't mean there's not a risk Aaron or what's the government's line on this well as Elizabeth said Don uh, our government did commission this study yeah. which was an overview on the issue it's also important to say that hydraulic fracturing has been around for some time in fact in many ways some of the innovations on this technology are Canadian and so in Western Canada uh, most of the Western provinces there has been quite a bit of fracturing uh, going on for a few decades with no significant issue at all. One, one of the real things the report said is this should be studied on an ongoing basis. And I think if you look at, it was Minister Kent, the previous minister that uh, asked for this compendium study, yeah. and, and we're looking at it, but the, the, the experience from the sector and from the regulators in the provinces out west, because this is regulated provincially as Robert said, uh, has been, there has been no impact on groundwater. And so this is one, uh, one part of our, our ongoing commitment to try and develop resources responsibly. And, and uh, you know, the minister's looking at this report and taking, taking their... I, I have uh, to say, we, we haven't detected an impact on groundwater yet. We're not monitoring groundwater enough to know what the impacts would have been from fracking that's taken place already. British Columbia did a study and found that the level of fracking in northern BC was actually responsible for earthquakes. Now, none of them were devastating earthquakes, but, I mean, that's the level of activity. Wow. And, I, and I think the other important point that came out of the... Uh, the recommendations or came out of this report was the fact that it needs to be looked at on a regional basis. In other words, just because there haven't been detected uh, problems in the West doesn't mean that that means it's safe to do it in the East or anywhere else. It's um, important, it's you know, important you, to know you've the You've got to be on your toes. The government's got to do a lot more uh, to study this, uh, to monitor it and set up proper regulations, like making sure that companies disclose the chemicals that they're uh, 
that they're forcing down through uh, through the earth. Robert's talking about, you know, there's been a lot of positive experience in, in the West. Right. Uh, it's been an innovative technology, many of which have been developed by us. Uh, but Eastern Canada, you know, New Brunswick in particular, but Nova Scotia as well, there is potential for that technology be to use in an area where they could not only use the jobs, but certainly use the resource royalties. So this has, there has to be a balance here, and part of the report was to make sure the balance is right. But there should be no knee-jerk reactions and say, absolutely not, when the, the science to date and the experience of Western Canada has been positive. Do you think a moratorium is the answer on this? I think a moratorium is the answer what on they, this. What they said was there was, no, there was not enough information really to proceed. So a moratorium has to That'd be, be there. I mean, take a pretty and, big uh, hit out west on that. Yeah, and I know that New Brunswick, and in, within New Brunswick and around and across Canada, there's a lot of opposition. In New Brunswick, I think it's. I think the citizens in the area should have a lot to say about this before it proceeds. And in New Brunswick, I think the vote would be. You know, the government wants to proceed in a hurry, but the citizens of New Brunswick would be. You know, will be heartened by a report of scientists that say, "Go slow. This has not got the AOK." -okay. There's protests, likewise a lot of pressure on governments in the east to try to create jobs and generate economic activity what this report does is give people enough information i believe um, to be able to uh, be cautious this, this is not quite related to that but it's sort of uh, archbishop desmond tutu is coming to alberta at the oil sands uh, at the end of the at the end of the month uh, and I, I guess i'm wondering what that signals i mean is it signaling uh, what, what, what would you take away from that i mean he's a, a world figure uh, a man that's revered in a lot of parts of the world. I'm What's amazed that, a man, that, a, that he's coming personally. He has signed, as have many world leaders, uh, calls for Keystone Pipeline not to be approved. There's a lot of concern globally about the environmental impact of the Athabasca oil sands. And in some ways, you know, in terms of its greenhouse gas potential, where it is right now, I think it's manageable for Canadians. If we want to have production of bitumen from the oil sands that is processed in Canada and controlled, you know, improve the environmental impact, reduce the amount of water per barrel, there's a lot we can do. But the, the, the scar uh, that Canada and the, the, the bad reputation that we're getting internationally by ignoring the calls to clean up our act, as particularly around our climate policies, are really going to come home to roost when someone like Archbishop Desmond Tutu comes and visits. And what will be interesting is, is what the government does to attack him. Because anybody that, that uh, speaks out in opposition uh, to, uh, to the uh, oil sands, uh, what they do is they attack their credibility, whether it's Neil Young or, uh, or anybody else. Well, I don't know. Archbishop is doesn't choose a little above Neil well, Young on the pecking order. But, but, but it's going to, you know, I, believe I, me, they'll try to How do you deal with this kind of celebrity talk, pile on, there, though? There have been a lot of people. You know, I remember James Cameron went the, yeah. many years ago. And in many cases, it's actually the companies operating in the Fort McMurray area, in the oil sands, bringing people out to dispel some of the myths. There is a challenge there. You know, the, the, a lot of the industry has been reducing their water and trying to work on things. And again, Canadian innovations with steam-assisted gravity drainage and a number of things have, have changed that area from the old open pit approach of decades ago to a much more minimal impact. Whoa, but it's but still an impact. In situ, but, in situ. But really, what, you know, there is a, going to be a major religious figure coming. Uh, and there's a by-election in that area soon, yes, so I'm is. sure it's as much to do with All politics right. from uh, in, the Liberals than anything very else. Quickly, very quickly, very quickly. In situ is not minimal impact. It's more greenhouse gases per barrel of bitumen, and it has the, some of the same issues as fracking in terms of water being shot and down. We're there. investing in technologies to, to try and mitigate. I'm almost out of time. I got to get this yeah. other one in. The Conservatives. I want to get your thought. Apparently, my friend John Iveson wrote this column about the Conservatives are very upset with the Supreme Court, and that Beverly McLaughlin, the Chief Justice, actually sort of gave them some advice to say, look. Uh, you shouldn't be appointing Mark Nadone. Uh, I'm curious what you're, you're hearing, Aaron O'Toole. You're in the conservative ranks. Are RMPs upset with the Supreme Court's behavior recently, not only in cases, but in terms of meddling with that judicial appointment? No, I, I think John's uh, column was an interesting sort of read, but it's a little bit of an overstatement on what's going on. Uh, Elizabeth and I went to the same law school. Lawyers love to have opinions on cases. I like the minority opinion in, in the Nadon case because I think in that case it, it's a bit absurd to say we could appoint this person back to the Quebec bar for 10 minutes and then yeah, meet, yeah. meet the qualification. So lawyers will have different takes on these cases. I think you know we've seen a few big decisions come from the Supreme Court, but that's that's what they're there for for these uh, for these big national reference cases. But the, the Prime Minister has said we respect the decision of the Supreme Court. We're disappointed on the Senate. 
more than the Dong. We're disappointed because we'd like to move forward on reform. Uh, and they want to sort of stick with the status quo in their interpretation of things, and that, that's fine. We respect that, but there's always this healthy to and fro between the, the legislative branch and the judiciary. Rolling your eyes. I didn't, I didn't go to the same school, same okay. law school. But it, it was almost in your riding. But, but, <laughs> but I'll tell you this, uh, you know, this is another example of the, of the conservative, you know, picking enemies um, and picking a fight with people. And, and for it to be the Supreme Court of Canada yeah. is, is frankly offensive. Um, you know, they should have known, and I think the Chief Justice, uh, if, they, if she said anything, it was the fact that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, Quebec needed to be on side, and they, and they weren't going to be. But the other um, thing and uh, they've got to, they should have known that. Okay, last word to you, Elizabeth. Just quickly, there's no evidence whatsoever that the Chief Justice meddled or interfered. It's routine when they're looking at names of potential judges to come to the bench. It's, it's the normal practice to consult. So Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin, I don't think there's any way that she would have gotten involved in anything political. And I think it, that, that attack on her is really disreputable. Uh, there is no attack, Don. And look, our government's well, the first to have public hearings on new nominees. And that, that's led to a lot more debate about them. We're out of yeah. time. <laughs> my, my friend John Iverson's usually proven right in the long run. We'll see. <laughs>